Hey everyone, welcome to the video. I'm my cheat sheet for today's only main slate for today on DraftKings. Before we continue though, if you could leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my new videos. I would really appreciate that. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16. And if you would like access into my entire MLB sheet and my Slack chat, you can hit the link in the description below for my Patreon. And also if you're wondering about NFL content, I am going to be doing NFL content. I just don't feel like doing it for preseason because it's probably not going to be the best info and preseason is really iffy anyway. So it's going to be coming out for week one in the NFL. We're going to do like a, I'm going to have a schedule. So I'm probably going to be doing like a quarterback breakdown video on either Monday or Tuesday. Then running backs the next day, receivers, tight ends, defense, uh, you know, all just in a day by day progression. And then on like Saturday, I might do like a, or, so, or Friday or Saturday night or something like that. I'll do like a full video just breaking down everything or anything new I come across. And I'll be doing extra stuff on Patreon as well. So I am looking forward to NFL. I will be doing NFL content. I just wanted to get that out there. So very excited for NFL when that's ready. And I am going to be playing preseason. I just don't, I'm not going to be doing any content for it because preseason can be wacky. So anyway, enough of that. Just want to put that out there that I will be doing NFL content. So anyway, let's get into this MLB main slate. So I have three options I like at pitching. Actually, four. I'll expand that to four. So Aaron Null at 10,600. John Gray, 8,200, then Dallas Keuchel at 8K. Then I also don't mind Eric La Eric Lauer if we need a cheap uh, pitching option either. So let's do a little preview of the pitching sheet to see why I like these guys. So up top, let me do this by salary. So I also think Matthew Boyd's in play, but that's not the guy I was actually talking about, but I do think he is in play. But I want to talk about Aaron Nola. So he gets the soft matchup versus the Giants. It's the lowest Vegas over-under of the entire slate at 7.5. He is a favorite. So I believe he actually has the lowest implied run total against him, maybe besides Sale, but it's pretty close. But he's got good numbers this season. He's got a 3.89 xFIP, 26.9% K rate. 9% walk rate is a little concerning, I will say that. But he isn't allowing a ton of hard contact. Gets a good amount of ground balls. Doesn't allow a lot of fly balls. And I do like the matchup versus the Giants. So if we go into this, they're actually a worse team versus lefties. I think we all kind of know that. But it's still a soft matchup nonetheless. Only an 88 WRC plus, 303 Woba, 169 team ISO. Now, it's not as good as Dallas Keuchel's matchup. But I think Aaron Nola is a much better pitcher. He's got ace level stuff. He is an ace. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he got 20, 30 points, which I would actually hope that's what we're getting out of 10,600. So I should say I wouldn't surprise me if he got 30 points in this matchup. Now, I mean, it's not the highest strikeout upside matchup in the world as the Giants are only striking out a 22% clip, but it's a great park for pitching. And I really just think it's a safe matchup. Chris Sale is cheaper at 10,000, at just 10,000 flat, but he has only paid off his salary twice in the past, like, seven games. Other than that, he's had really he's had two really good games in a row versus Toronto and Tampa. Outside of that, he has not paid off value whatsoever, especially the last two games. So he's coming in in bad form. And it's just not a good matchup versus the Angels. Angels are a really good offense. And if you look at their numbers, they're only striking out 17% of the time two left-handed pitching this season, 101 WRC+, plus, which is tied for third highest on the entire slate. So I don't really want to use Chris Sale versus... The Angels, you know, Mike Trout could always go bonkers. We're in Boston. It's not the greatest park for pitching. So probably going to be staying away from Chris Sale. Give me Aaron Nola. Give me Mike, uh, my, not Mike Boyd, Matthew Boyd. And give me a few other guys instead over Chris Sale. So not going to be looking to play Chris Sale. And then if we want to, we need, well, we're going to have to, not if you want to, some SP2 options. John Gray, 8,200, looks like a pretty decent option versus a San Diego team who strikes out a lot versus righties. John Gray does not have the worst numbers in the world. 3.94 xFIP, 23% strikeout rate, only a 27% fly ball rate. He's getting a lot of ground balls at 49%. And if you look at his splits versus righties, if I can pull that up in a second here. So let me make sure I find him. Yeah, he's got a 25.3% strikeout rate to righties, only a 5% walk rate. And if you look at his splits, that walk rate's cut by 7% when it comes from lefties to righties. Higher strikeout rate versus righties. And he's going to see a lot of righties in this matchup versus San Diego. If we look at San Diego's numbers versus right-handed pitching, it's a favorable matchup for him. As you can see, they have a 26.2% strikeout rate, which is second highest on the entire slate. They do have a little bit of power, which is the only thing with them. But overall, it's a pretty decent matchup. And he's not going to be in course field, so you don't have to worry about that. We're in a decently pitcher-friendly park in San Diego, so I do like John Gray at only 8,200. And then I don't mind Dallas Keuchel either at 8K. Now, he doesn't have the most exciting numbers in the world, but he hasn't really gotten blown up this year. I know he had a really rough outing the first time, 
Uh, he was out, but you know, you'd expect that after being rusty after you know after a while off for not being on an MLB team. But ever since then, he's actually had some decent games. Like, he doesn't have a big strikeout upside. He doesn't have much strikeout upside, I should say. But decent numbers all around, 406 XFIP. He's been pretty good versus lefties. As he has a 27% strikeout rate, only a 3% walk rate, only allowing 10% fly balls, and getting 66% ground balls. You know, we always know with Dallas Keiko, he's a big ground ball guy, which we do like. He doesn't give up a ton of hard contact. And he gets the matchup versus the Marlins, which is what we absolutely love. Now, righties... They're worse versus righties, but that doesn't mean they're any good versus lefties either. As you can see, they have they strike out more versus righties, which I should say, but they were, they're they really weak team overall versus lefties. Only a 130 team ISO, 286 Woba, 78 WRC+. Plus. These numbers are all bottom of the barrel. As you can see, these are bright green numbers all around, so I don't mind Dallas Keuchel at all 8K. And if you really don't want to spend up for pitching, I guess you could go John Gray and Dallas Keuchel and load up on the bats, which I don't think is the most, the most terrible option in the world. And then I said I would expand this to four guys, and I will add Eric Lauer as a cheap pump play just because it's a good matchup versus the Rockies away from Coors Field. So the Rockies strike out a ton versus left-handed pitching, 25.6% of the time, only an 89 WRC+. Plus. Really, the only guys I'd be worried about is Arenado and Story. Other than that, I think it's a should be smooth sailing for Lauer. The only problem is if he maybe walks a guy or two and he gives up a two- or three-run shot to Arenado or Story. That could be the concern. He doesn't go that deep in games either, but I guess I don't mind him as a pump play. If he can get you 10 to 15 points, he'd probably be happy with that if, one of, if the aces don't go off. Or I shouldn't say that, if the SP2s don't go off, because you're going to want to pair Lauer with an ace. So that's my thoughts on pitching today. I like uh, Aaron Nola, John Gray, and Dallas Keuchel the most, and then Eric Lauer if you need a pump play. So anyway, let's get into the bats now. So I... I this really wasn't the most exciting slate to me. There was only a couple of spots I really liked, and one of the spots is in Miami, so it's a downgrade to the bats. But at catcher, I do I do like the Red Sox a lot. Christian Vasquez at 4,300 versus the lefty Dylan Peters. Now, Peters has a decently high strikeout rate versus righties. I shouldn't say decently. He's got a high strikeout rate versus righties at 30%. But Vasquez has been very good versus lefties this season. Dylan Peters is not a very good pitcher, and you know the Red Sox are obviously an elite offense. So I do like Christian Vasquez a lot. Then Brian McCann at 3,900 versus Eli <laughs> Hernandez. We'll, we'll just say Hernandez, who's giving up a lot to lefties. A lot of power, lower strikeout rate. So I do like the lefties from Atlanta. The only problem is, like I said earlier, they're in Miami. So that's a big downgrade to the bats. If this was in Atlanta, I'd be really, really high on the Braves. But still, I think they'll be able to handle their, handle their own versus Hernandez, even though they're in Miami. And if we're not using those two guys, just whoever pops out as a punt option. I don't know who's going to be in the lineup at 12 in the morning, at 12 in the morning the day before. So, or I guess the, the day of, but uh, if there's a really good punt option at like 2k, I wouldn't mind using him. And then at first base, we have Freddie Freeman at 5,400. Like I said, with Hernandez, he really gives up a lot to lefties and Freddie Freeman's elite versus righties. One of the better left or one of the best left-handed hitters in the league. So I do like Freddie Freeman. Then Michael Chavez at 4,600. I love the Red Sox righties in this matchup. They hit lefties very well. Dylan Peters is not the best pitcher in the world whatsoever. So I do like Chavez. And same same thing with Sam Travis. He should probably be hitting maybe six in the order. So I do like that a lot. And just picking on Peters here. Really, there's not a lot of offenses to, with, that I want to use to attack pitching tonight. But Red Sox do stand out as one of the clear, spent, uh, clear offenses to spend up on. Then second base, we have Ozzy Albies at 4,800. Now he's a better hitter versus left-handed pitching, but he's been hot, and he's one of those guys I like to play when he's hot because he can be streaky, and he's in, he's in a groove right now. And he had, he's had back-to-back 30-point -back games. He had a really good game today as well in the early slate, so I don't mind using him versus Hernandez. Then with Merrifield at 4,100, another guy who hits lefties very well. Matthew Boyd is a pretty good pitcher with a really good strikeout rate. But with Merrifield so good versus lefties, I'm going to give him the advantage here. And he's only 4,100, and the Detroit bullpen is awful. If they can ten, if they can get to Boyd early, they'll see a lot of them. And then Michael Chavez, where he talked about. At third base, we have Chris Bryant at 4,500. So he's got a matchup versus Alex Wood, the lefty. And Chris Bryant's always been really good versus left-handed pitching. We're in Cincinnati. The wind's going to be blowing out about 12, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that's going to be looking pretty good for the bats. And it's a great park for hitting. So Julie like Chris Bryant at 4,500. Nolan Arenado, 4,900. I know I said a little bit of interest in Lauer. I'm not saying I really like Lauer at all. I'd rather play 
Arenado's story over playing Lauer, but this is one of the guys I do think can give Lauer some problems on Arenado. He's really, really good versus left-handed pitching. I know we're not in course field, but Arenado can hit lefties anywhere. Then DJ LeMahieu at 5,100. The Yankees are in a really good spot versus Thomas Pannone or Pannoni. I'm not totally sure, but the Toronto bullpen's bad too. LeMahieu's been very good versus lefties. The Yankees are one of the top, uh, better stacks of the entire slate. So I do like DJ leading off. And then at shortstop, we have Trevor Story, 5,500 versus Eric Lauer. He's actually been better versus right-handed pitching this season, but if he can hit a homer off of Garrett Cole like he did today, I think he can have his way versus Eric Lauer. Not that's the most scientific or analytical approach to it, but uh, Trevor Story's always been good versus lefties in his career, just a little bit down this year versus them, but Eric Lauer's not the best pitcher in the world, and Trevor Story's an elite hitter, so I don't mind using him, although I do think he's a little overpriced for not being in course field. Then Xander Bogarts at 5,200. He's been elite versus lefties this season, and Dylan Peters, like I said, sound like a broken record, but he's not the best pitcher in the world. Then Nico Goodrum at 4,200. I actually think the Tigers are in a decent uh, stack spot tonight going against Jorge Lopez, who's just not a very good pitcher at all. He's got a low strike. Uh, not, he actually doesn't have a lowest strikeout rate, but he's worse versus lefties. So I don't mind using Goodrum, but I also don't mind using the righties either if you want to full stack the Tigers. They should be able to get to Lopez early. They're going to see a bad bullpen in Kansas City, and I think they could be a good value stack for tomorrow. And then in the high-end outfield, we have J.D. Martinez at 5,300. I have him as a core play facing a lefty. He is one of, if not the best, one of the best hitters in the league versus left-handed pitching, one of the highest WRC pluses, one of the highest ISOs, highest Wobas, just everything. So I do like J.D. Martinez a lot. Then Mookie Betts at 5,200. He's been not as good versus lefties as J.D., but he's still a great hitter. He's going to be in a great spot as all the Red Sox are tomorrow. And then the Air, then not the Aaron Judge at 4,500. Now he's not that expensive, but I actually think I messed up his uh, pricing. <laughs> Let me check that because that doesn't look right. No, okay, I guess that is right. Okay, he's really cheap. So I was thinking he was 4,800 and I missed uh, price that. So I think he's in an awesome spot tomorrow. I actually probably should have made made him a core play, but I really like him going against uh, Thomas Pannoni. The Yankees should have their way with him and that bullpen. So. Aaron Judge stands out at a really good value at only 4500 And then in the mid-range outfield, we have Chris Bryant, who we already talked about, versus the lefty Alex Wood. Nick Castellanos, 4200 I have him as a core play just for how cheap he is. He's always been really good versus lefties, and that has held true this season as he's been very good versus them. ISO a little bit above or just around 300 So I think we can get a cheap home run there, especially being Great American Ballpark. Wind's blowing out, so... Nothing not to like there. Then what Merrifield we already talked about versus the lefty. I feel like everyone I have on here is facing a lefty almost. <laughs> but then that, in the value I feel we have Sam Travis at 3,600. Nico Goodrum at 4,200. And that's really all I have for the value I feel. I have to see where guys get put in the order. And then I can add more value pieces. Because, you know, value pieces pretty much just guys that, I unex that unexpectedly get moved up to the top of the order. And they become good value plays like uh, Grisham in the past few days. And then the core plays for me are going to be Aaron Noll at 10,600, J.D. Martinez at 5,300, Nick Castellanos at 4,200. And then the top stacks for me are going to be the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Cubs, the Tigers, and then the Braves. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for the video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss my new videos. Really appreciate that. And follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16 if you want access into the entire MLB sheet and my Slack chat. Hit that link in the description below for my Patreon. I will see you guys in the next video, and best of luck to you guys tomorrow.